everyone, Dr. Clark here. I want to talk to you about some really interesting information about central nervous system inflammation in people that have fibromyalgia. Now, what do we mean by central nervous system? Well, we don't mean the nerves in your arms and your legs and your spine. We're talking about your spinal cord and we're talking about your brain. There's a lot of research to show definitively without question that the brains of people that have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, they process pain abnormally. Now, the next question that we should ask is, well, why do they do that? What's something that could cause that? Well, one of the names given to this abnormal processing of pain is uh, central sensitization or nociceptive sensitization. And those are just technical terms for meaning your nervous system is abnormally excitable to pain, and it abnormally processes pain. Um, it's hypersensitive to pain, I guess is the best way to look at it. There's a lot of other you know, subtleties to that, but that's the basic idea. Now, one of the things that we know that can do that is if you've got inflammation in your body, right? Inflammation in your body will definitely sensitize your pain nerves to send pain. But you can also get a sensitization inside your brain in those pain circuits there. And uh, a good way to think about central sensitization is like this, uh, it, like kind of in math terms. If you have central sensitization, as most people with fibromyalgia do, then 1 plus 1 equals 10 or 1 plus 0 equals 10, which means your pain system can get really good at firing and keep on firing even though there's, you know, there's no tissue damage happening. So what we're talking about is some chemical, metabolic, immune system mechanisms. And there's a very interesting uh, 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 abstract that was presented at a, uh, a conference but was published in the European Journal of Pain a couple of years ago. And what they looked is they looked at uh, CSF, you know, cerebrospinal fluid, the fluid that's in your brain and in your spinal cord. They measured this for levels of a couple of different cytokines. Now, cytokines are immune system uh, messengers. And what they measured was for a cytokine called tumor necrosis factor alpha, or TNF alpha. And it's a, uh, just for you guys that may know, it's a Th1 uh, stimulator. They looked for that and they looked for interleukin 8. Now, what they did is they, they didn't look at for actual levels of it because it was very difficult to determine. What they looked was an indirect marker called mRNA. And the takeaway message is this. What they found is that in people with fibromyalgia, they had a much higher level of tumor necrosis factor alpha in their cerebral spinal fluid, and it was strongly associated with fatigue. Okay, strongly associated with fatigue. Now, some of the hallmarks of fibromyalgia, if, it, if your doctor is current and if you, know, you want to know, is you basically got to have like this little triad. You've got to have widespread pain, you got to have fatigue, and you have to have uh, sleep problems. Now fatigue is one of the big things that fibromyalgia uh, does to a person. And we now know that in the central nervous system, okay, in your brain, in your cerebrospinal fluid, there is a significantly higher amount of this inflammatory chemical. It's one of the very first studies, if not the first study, to show that this is, this is what's happening. Now, does it explain everything that's going on with you? No. The other one they looked for was interleukin-8, which is also an, an inflammatory uh, a cytokine, a messenger. And they found that levels of that were associated with fibromyalgia impact questionnaire scores. Now, if you've never seen an FIQ, it uh, basically looks like this, and it asks you questions such as, over the past week, uh, rate, always, most, occasionally, or never, were you able to go shopping? Were you able to vacuum a rug, make bed, walk several blocks, visit friends or relatives? So it asks you those types of important uh, activities of daily living questions. And then it asks you to kind of rate, um, you know, how tired have you been, how nervous or anxious have you felt? So those two cytokines are directly related to the presenting core problems of fibromyalgia. One is fatigue and one is all these different impacts of fibromyalgia on your life. So the question is, what are you going to do about it? That's great information, but what do we do about it? Well, it tells you that fibromyalgia for sure is a neurological condition that involves inflammation, but the question is, what is causing the inflammation? That's beyond the scope of what I've got time to talk about today. But I will tell you this, it comes down to a variety of things, such as autoimmunity, food sensitivities, uh, different types of bacterial and parasitic infections, psychological stress, vitamin deficiencies, toxicity, glutathione, nitric oxide. There is a bunch of stuff and you can't do it yourself. So I hope you're working with someone who understands all those things I just kind of numbered out there. If you're working with someone that's still using that old 11 of 18 tender point thing from 20 years ago, 
I, 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 you know, I'm not going to tell you to change doctors because I don't, you know, I'm not going to tell you to do that. But I think you might want to consider talking with someone that understands those factors I just talked about, because um, that's what the current information is telling us. And the current information tells us that fibromyalgia is linked with central nervous system inflammation. So your doctor's got to be a good detective and figure out what's causing it in you, because there's a bunch of things you can do to stop it.